I wanted to do a follow-up video um, to my initial Sky Active Learning video that I did a little while ago. Um, it's been by far my most popular video I've made. Um, I get a lot of questions about it. Um, first one being, why didn't it work? I think we've worked through a lot of that. Um, second one I get is, what is the car actually doing? And can I do it another way? So removing the negative battery cable, I've seen that. Mazda literature is very specific that that does not work, that does not clear it. The values that are written in there are written into the, the actual memory of the TCM. And you have to get those to clear, you have to tell it that it needs to be clear. Just unhooking the battery cable will not do it. Again, Mazda is very specific in their literature that will not do it. Um, so short of a factory scan tool, this is really the only way to do it. And it is a factory approved procedure. I get that a lot. Is this real? I know people have done it, they've tried it, and they like it. I know it's helped a lot of people. Um, so I want to kind of touch on what it's actually doing to try to try to answer that question um, of what it's doing. So to start, there's two adaptive, um, I guess, subjects that people ask a lot about. Is the adaptive, like, how does it know who is driving? How does it learn my like my style of driving. The second portion of the adaptive is the transmission actually learning um, itself. Because of manufacturing differences, you do have different clearances that happen um, and then just wear of the unit as it ages. And so the transmission is always adapting. It's always taking up for that wear and it's always looking to see how you're driving. Now I'm not going to touch a lot on um, the adaptive portion of what it sees from the driver because I don't have access to the TCM. I hope that changes in the future. Um, so it's, it's it would just be speculation based on industry. Um, I do have some of the ZF stuff. Um, so I can talk a little bit about kind of what that means in that sense. So ZF will have aggression tables and they are different depending on the OEM. Um, but they're called aggression tables because the car will take into consideration like your throttle position, how fast you're going, um, how hard you're hitting the brakes, all that. And it calculates and puts you into an aggression slot. Depending on the manufacturer, you can have, I think I've seen the most was 15 aggression slots. And then depending on the, the aggression number that you're assigned as a driver, it will put um, you go into different shift scheduling. So in most of the Fs, there's 99 shift tables and there's 99 torque converter tables. And so it will assign you in that slot based on how aggressive you are. And they usually will pick the aggression um, by like you've done it so many times. And again, it varies by manufacturer. So like in a Chrysler situation, um, let's say you drove a, a certain way 300 times. It, you, the way you were driving, it noticed that it puts you into an aggression slot, and so that will put you in some different shift scheduling stuff. Interesting stuff. I don't have the Mazda specific on that, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna speculate if it's the same way. But I do know that they do. It does learn to your driving style. Um, what I can talk about more in depth is what the adaptation does to overcome uh, maybe some things that it has learned or some values that um, as the gearbox is aged that it can learn out of. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the relearn procedure and then we'll walk through that video of what it's doing. Okay, so I just performed the initial learning on my car. Um, this will be the quick and easy just to show people, you know, what it's doing, what you're feeling in the pedal. Um, so this is the, the what we've got going on. So the closing clutch, this is right when I've started the procedure. So the closing clutch already has learned value of negative 1.12 PSI that it wants to pull um, from that clutch when it releases. Engine RPM's at 790, so let's start this and see where we get. So I'm doing the back and forth motions, the M plus, M minus, all that. Let's get to the good stuff. Okay. So this is when we restart it. So it's already changing values. 
then it's going to go up to 1200 rpm and then you'll watch these oil pressure switches you'll watch them start to rapidly fluctuate so we've already got a set value now it's cleared it now we're up to 1200 now watch these rapidly go on off on off so that's what you're feeling um, as it's going through the 1200 or so rpm when you're feeling the car kind of move a little bit some people will move pretty hard through the pedal um, you'll have that going on but what it's doing is it's sending fluid um, through different various clutch sets and different portions of the valve body and getting a baseline recording of how long it takes for that circuit to work and in this case circuit means hydraulic and electric because they're one on this one um, I'll go into that later in the video if you want to watch the longer version of it. Um, you see now we've populated a value here. We're bringing our idle back down. So on the opening clutch that it ended on, it wanted a little more um, PSI to engage it. We can't watch, at least with scan tool data, uh, which clutch it was trying to, or what it finished on or whatever. Let's talk about the valve body for a minute. Um, it's considered a mechatronic unit because the TCM and the solenoids are integrated in with all the valves and the electronic port or the mechanical portion of it. This is the turbine speed sensor. It reads the speed of the input shaft from the high low clutch drum. This is the output speed sensor. It reads off of the, uh, the gear that drives the diff. So between these two, that's how it's able to calculate what gear ratio the transmission's actually making. Here's uh, the underside of the valve body where you can see the solenoids. And the direct linears, and the on-offs right there. There's a pressure switch that lives here. That pressure switch is still there. I robbed this one for something I'm doing. Um, their job is to detect how long it takes for fluid to pass through the valve body, through the case, into the clutches, and back and the response time that it, or the time that it took to do that. Then the transmission calibrates, and then it learns how long it took for that fluid to transfer. And that's part of the initial learning, is it sets up a baseline for that. Mazda does not sell these solenoids separately because they're calibrated to this TCM. There's certain floor rates that each solenoid will do. The solemn Mazda sells this as an entire unit for that reason. As the transmission does get older, solenoids can get a little bit lazier, can take them slightly longer to respond. Um, you can see this valve body is partially disassembled. Um, there's valves inside there. When those solenoids move, they actuate pressure. It takes time for that fluid to move all the way through all the channels inside here, actuate the valves. So again, that's one of the things it's always looking for, but as the transmission wears, you can get hydraulic leaks inside here. Um, you can get solenoids that can kind of be lazy. The other thing, so this is why sometimes the reset procedure works for people and sometimes it doesn't. So you might get, it might act a certain way and then it goes back to acting how it was before. The reason that could be is because there's just too much wear for it to learn out of that. So this is our input clutch set. These are on 1st through 4th. These are on 4th through 6th. Um, these are considered input because they only drive something. They don't break something like the other clutches in the rear. Um, so as the transmission ages, the friction starts to wear down uh, just for natural use. Now these get a lot of use. This was out of a CX-9 that had around 100,000 miles. Um, it failed because the 3.5 reverse clutches were burned up and it was slipping. The steels had some pretty good hot spots on those. Um, so just kind of to show part of the adaptive learning um, that they do go through and why there's partially adaptive learning. So you've got that clutch, and then you got a steel. There's five input, or five uh, high clutches, five low clutches, and they alternate between the steel and then the friction material. So let's look at what wear looks like around that mark. So Mazda's discard on this clutch is 1.475 millimeters. So we're at 1.45. That doesn't mean that um, this clutch was slipping. What that means is if you're doing an overhaul, um, this is past Mazda's discard, so you would put a new clutch in there. 
So here we have a brand new one. See the friction material, it's nice. Um, these are about 1.5, 1.52 if you don't compress them too hard. So you can see after that amount of life, there is, or the amount of use, that there is some life taken out of them just from natural wear and tear. So that's another reason why the adaptive function is there, is to allow, um, allow for that wear inside the friction sets to be made as well. So the other one that was really low besides the 3.5 reverses that were burned up, uh, the 2.6 brake clutch was also past discard. Discard on that is 1.475 as well, and they were all down around 1.46, 1.47.